okay welcome back to all the humanities um just real quick announcements uh we're gonna start doing spooky books i think we're just gonna do one spooky book uh next next week so keep an eye out for that and there should be some other stuff that i'm gonna put out um so yeah also i forgot to mention that the castle that they used in the movie the 2007 one is called lismore castle Lismore Castle. It's not actually North- I don't think Northanger Abbey actually existed, but it's real. You can go visit it. <laughs> okay. Welcome back to Oli Humanity. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Disrespect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome back to Oli Humanity. Are you gonna be playing? No. Only when I get bored. Lying to my ears. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> this is why I'm here. Welcome back to Holy Humanities. This is your, your this, these are your hosts. <laughs> are you okay? I'm not okay. Let me do it again. Um, <laughs> I'm sick. I don't thirst. You always are for some reason. No, I'm not. Okay. Welcome back, guys, to Holy Humanities. This is episode 16. North Anger, North Anger, North Anger, North Anger Abbey by Jane Austen. The anger of the north. Um, I was thinking hanger. Like a hanger. North hanger? <laughs> yeah. North hanger. <laughs> that is the one way that people everywhere agree that is wrong, actually. I uh, no. Okay. I'm just saying. Anyways. Um, okay. Oh, current reads. Um, Tis by Holly Black. It doesn't just... Well, I, how did you been... No, I've been reading that book. It's called Titus or something? I don't know. Is it Tith. like The Cruel Prince? It looks kind of the same. Yeah. It's different, though. Is it like a prequel or something? No, it's an entirely different story. Oh, okay. It looks really similar, like it, even the cover. It does. But it's 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 on another girl? I don't know. It's kind of weird. She She drinks and she smokes a lot for being... I don't know what her age is, but I'm pretty sure she's still a teenager. Well, that's weird. Well, yeah. okay. <clears throat> Maybe she's European. <laughs> is she sure an she, alcoholic or is she sure just European? <laughs> she, I'm pretty sure she's American. Oh, yeah, she's an alcoholic. And then her mom is also like, let's share cigarettes. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? This is bad. I thought she was older when she started smoking with her mom. I was mm -hmm. like, I'm pretty sure she's not. Okay, well, there's that. I think she's maybe 18, but I'm like, okay concerned anyways yeah. um <clears throat> so do you like it i've only read like maybe a chapter and a half currently it's pretty mm -hmm. good i like it okay i'm waiting for it to get interesting that's cool <clears throat> oh yeah i'm i'm a little sick so that's why my voice sounds like this although it always sounds dorky so yeah, yeah not much of a difference anyways yeah. um my current reads a bunch of stuff for a, a video that's coming up a video i say hopefully i have it out by halloween but um probably not no spoilers so i'm not <laughs> gonna talk about it um <clears throat> so yeah uh do we have anything else yeah my i'm sick is that nico that's nico why is she meowing so weird <laughs> she's such a weirdo oh she sounds like a baby um it's look creepy but also really funny also i'm worried Okay, so this is episode 16, Northanger Abbey. Um, so, uh, really quick, I just wanted to do a little, like, update on Jane Austen's biography. So, she and her family moved to Bath before she published this book. I remember reading about it. Uh, she was pretty sick during this time. I think also her dad was sick. Somebody in her family was sick. And so, she wasn't able to write as much, and it's often thought that it made her cut... Um, Northang Northanger Abbey short and tie up the ending quickly and I kind of feel the same the ending is a bit like anticlimactic so there's that just to keep in mind um, alright so for the summary Catherine goes to Bath makes friends with the Thorps who turn out to be manipulative horrible people uh, she falls in love with Henry Tilney and then um, oh whose brother is Captain Tilney and er openly, openly, openly flirts with uh, Catherine's brother's 
fiance like in front of everybody it's it's humiliating um but more than that he's like really hurt by it um but anyways she hangs out at northanger abbey which is the home of the tilneys and in her mind because there's a whole thing about novels during this time and in this book um she she thinks that it looks like it in her mind she sees it as like this old mansion like the ones in novels um just sort of like historic and whatnot and cool looking like how we would think of castles nowadays um but god damn yeah cool right like princesses and like not dragons but like knights and stuff i don't know oh, yeah. anyways <laughs> yeah so henry uh on like the way he talks about it and like makes a story he's basically messing with her but she's too naive to she's a kid she's not a kid well they're pretty Useful? close in age she's just naive and uh. sheltered and gullible <laughs> so he's like telling this creepy story about the house and she's like oh, really and he's like sure <laughs> that's what it was like as a freshman in high school yeah well you know she's just it's not that she's younger because she's like of age and she's been of age for a while um so she's probably around 18 19 oh, yeah she's still pretty young yeah but like yeah okay so main things or ideas that popped up like in my head so autonomy um this in to me it was like kind of a big thing i know that um well it actually it does tie into like novels and whatnot because it has to do with like things that that women are interested in and how that's often like made fun of um so my two major issues with some of the characters are isabella well my two characters that i don't like are isabella and mr thorpe her brother um they don't really listen to her to what she says or wants they kind of treat her like an object or like the way i thought of it was like a dog at home who's just waiting for them instead of a person with a life so um there's this point where she like decides to do something right and i'll talk about it later but in essence mr thorpe grabs her when she's like no i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna go to explain it i'm gonna go to these people and explain what happened and he like grabs her to stop her um Ew. yeah yeah i don't know but that guy grabs her and then her best friend apparent supposedly is like crying about it like just do what we say and then her brother which is the thing that got me because these two people she's known for like a month and she's again she's naive and sheltered so she's known her for a little bit she's like oh she would never treat me like bad Wow. In in reality, you get older and you realize you don't know people. Just because you're like close to them really quickly does not mean that they're good people and that that you that you know them. You know, just means you guys clicked. Yeah. Uh huh. So, yeah. the The thing that really bothered me though was that her brother is like, just listen to them, just do what they say. Stop being selfish. And she's like, excuse me, I made plans with these people, and this man went up to them and was like oh, I already decided for you that you're going to go with this, and I told them that you canceled the plans. And she's like, that's exactly the opposite of what I said. And then she tries to go and talk to them, and he's like, no, and grabs her hand. And they're all, like, crying and, like, you're the selfish one, you're the crazy one. Which I cannot stand. Look, the, uh, my issue with it is that men are going to be obnoxious and rude and not understand what it means to struggle with having a voice as a woman right so mr thorpe i understand he's been a uh, rude and annoying the whole time so i expected it um so he's literally a man in the 1800s so yeah so I, I was like yeah i saw that coming but her friend who's also a woman i uh, like you should understand how tough it is to go through this sort of thing and you're like literally she starts it. stomping her feet i think and like saying no 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 i'm like you are literally a five-year-old throwing a tantrum please grow up nobody stomps their feet i know but her brother age. is what got me i was like you know because he is in love thinks he's in love with isabella the best friend and he's no. like just do what they say no why would you still choose some girl you love her like over your own family like i that's weird the way that got me i was mad i was cooking 
I was making spaghetti and like, listening to the audiobook, and I was like, how dare you, <laughs> Detective Santiago? The way you I was so long. mad. I was so mad, Sarah. You're like, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna be gone real quick. I was so mad. Anyways, um... But yeah, she's just like, she gets over it really quickly, way faster than I would have. That would have been like, I don't want to talk to you for like months. But, um, she's naive, shelter, so she's like, eh, we, we talked it over, you know? Um, um, yeah, so another thing I wanted to talk about was reputation or word of mouth. Um, uh, another thing that happens in this story, um, is that... There's sort of things that happen by word of mouth or reputation, not really your by your own actions that get people in trouble or like mess up their lives. And it just made me think of like sort of like Mean Girls in the Burn Book where yeah. some people just like to start crap or they turn out to they, they try to do it just to like either make themselves look better or to just mess with people. And they, and then when their consequences, like, come up, they're like, oh, but it was just a joke. Or I didn't mean to do that. No, you know that one scene where she goes up to this girl and tells her, like, hey, you have, like, a really cute skirt. And then, Mm -hmm. like, as soon as she walks away and she's gone, she's like, such an ugly skirt. Yeah. Which, it was cute, by the way. Yeah. Also, fashion taste is subjective. Anyways. (laughs) You only wore pink. Yeah, but it, it, for me, it just really, <clears throat> it, it, it talked a lot about how, it's something that's still relevant today, like, it's something that happened to me, um, I've had people, like, talk about me, and then other people assume that they, what they said is real, or actually happened without talking to me, and they just don't talk to me anymore, and it, like, it never made sense to me how, um, people just, take people at their word for what they're saying but i get it i get it because sometimes there's stuff that's so serious or stuff that seems serious so you're like you don't want to like victim blaming you don't want to do that right so you're like oh my god are you okay you know you don't go oh but what happened but for me it's like you get older you should know that you should probably listen to both sides yeah some people are liars some people are liars, and you should probably, if you value a friendship, uh, you should probably talk things out with them before you just assume stuff about them. Supposedly, I had a sister, a younger sister. Oh, yeah, you told me in high school. In high school, who was a freshman. I was like, I don't know talk, her. I don't know what you're talking about. My sister's in middle school. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. That stuff is, like, kind of harmless, though. But there's stuff, like, there's in this, it's it's crazy. There's, like, damage that can't be undone. And then, even if it turns out that it's not true, there's st- people sometimes still look at you differently. Yeah, because they're still gonna, like, someone's not gonna hear, oh, it was false, it wasn't a rumor. They're gonna still believe it, or they're gonna be like, sure. Yeah, or they had, like, their view of you has changed, where they can't look at you the same way as before. That happens to some people, which is not fair, but it's also like, I don't know. I think we're, I think some people are just more paranoid and I'm not like, I'm like not immune to that. That happens to me too. But anyways, um, yeah, I just don't, I don't like it when people, even if somebody is talking about you, like, and saying stuff that isn't true it could always go wrong, you know? I don't know. I just, I don't know. It kind of feels like, at at its best, it's usually, like, annoying and kind of nosy and meddling. And then at its worst, the, you, people are, like, actually trying to harm you and mess up your life. So, Not yeah. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Yeah, but when you add, like, the sort of thing about rumors into Northanger Abbey, which talks about, like, gender I- issues, um, it, it becomes sort of more layered. Uh, Catherine has very little money, she doesn't have a lot of influence, and then she meets a woman who, uh, 
a friend supposedly who has money and influence and oh this is stuff i already talked about oh okay anyways i have really cute knife earrings oh yeah They're hermes really hermes has really yeah. <laughs> hermes has really cute knife earrings apparently um hold on my foot they got fake blood i like them okay all right so right so what i was talking about earlier i was talking about novels right yeah so i was talking about novels and i wanted to talk more about like women and religion um so novels back in the day were more like they were sort of frowned upon by clergymen um they were thought to give too much activity to a young woman's brain and like spirit uh they usually had like adventurous stuff going on there was like horror well bro she can read yeah basically like she's dangerous you know um basically like too much was going on to like make women want more than like a normal life like that women don't go on adventures you guys are supposed to stay home and and have babies and like like, be boring yeah like in so like you're not supposed to want to experience the world like it's dangerous out there you guys are too delicate you know just stay home and just do nothing I mean, well, yeah. that sounds great, but, like, also, like, can I go outside, Jimmy, for, like, two seconds? Yeah, but the thing about them is that they weren't, I don't think they were actually looked down upon until women started to like them. Like, they came out and people thought, I don't think they were, like, uh, targeted towards women, but then women started to like them, and then they were like, whoa, 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 why do you guys like it? So, it's basically, like, Uh, like a lot of things that women tend to enjoy especially younger women it was sort of um ridiculed and vilified it's kind of like fan fiction like a little while ago i still like fan fiction yeah but like people make fun of it they say it's like embarrassing or it's like dorky and just not a real art form or anything like that or they they basically just say it's silly and like a waste of time, right? They sound boring. <laughs> yeah. They sound so boring. Yeah, but so the characters in the story actually speak about novels. Mr. Mr. Gilbert. No, Mr. Tilney. I don't know why I put Gilbert. Who the Gilbert. heck is Gilbert? <laughs> <laughs> no, so Mr. Tilney, who is Catherine's love interest. Nico! Mr. Tilney, who is Catherine's love interest, loves novels just like her, but he's actually a clergyman, too. Hmm. So, it's, he's sort of like a... Is he, like, a good clergyman? Yeah. Basically, okay. like, oh, clergymen can be good. Like, not all of them are bad. I think that's what they're trying to say. Like, Austin was trying to say, like, not all clergymen, but some of them are saying that it's trash and a lot of them have influence. The ones that have influence are saying that. Well, some of the ones who have influence are saying that. And it's damaging the way people are looking at them. And it's not letting women enjoy things that they, that's basically harmless. Oh, they sound so boring. Yeah, anyways, so it does, the thing that Austin does talk about is that Catherine does actually have like an overactive imagination in mind because of novels. Um, She does eventually get over them. She's kind of, like, delusional at one point, but, um, she gets embarrassed by it. She's like, oh my god, I can't believe I thought that. Um, so, like, I think what Austin was trying to say was that everybody has dumb notions in their head when they're young, but we grow out of them. Hopefully, some people never grow, but, or, like, grow up, but for the most part, we do change. Um, and I think, basically, what she was trying to say, like, just to relax and let girls have fun and be dumb for a while, not take it too seriously, they're not going to hell because they read a book about adventure and a, I don't know, you know? Exactly. I think Mr. Collins talks about it in Pride and Prejudice when he's talking about, like, Fordyce's sermons. Like, this is what women should listen to. The Bible. Yeah, like, because you guys are so easily strayed morally because of the, what do you call it? He should not the Garden of talking. Eden or whatever the heck. Last person to be talking. I know. Anyways, um... Yeah, they just, basically, um, I think girls just, especially back then, because they were so isolated, they just liked the sound of adventure and mystery more than real life for the time being, like, because growing up is hard. Imagine growing up back then as a girl. Who wouldn't? Painful. 
it's, it's painful now. Boring. So just like let them have their fun, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, so for reference, they're kind of how people used to think of fan fiction not too long ago. And other female oriented orientated literature genres slash slash subgenres um there was this feeling that not only were they embarrassing a waste of time and ridiculous but also morally dangerous um and they kind of might be like the first three but there's also no real harm unless it's giving you bad ideas about what a healthy relationship is supposed to look like then it becomes uh dangerous <laughs> that i do think is kind of bad but like how many of us didn't have a, a age like that where we watched like twilight and we're like oh my god yes this is the perfect relationship this is what i want out of life and now we look at it and we just sort of laugh but we enjoy it but we laugh yeah um i read all the books of twilight i'll be honest i just read it to see what was so special about it yeah it was whatever yeah it's very much so whatever the, bo- the movies are better no no (laughs) okay well um yeah i think basically austin a lot of what this novel has to do with is austin basically just trying to defend novels and humanize them Mm -hmm. you know like yeah they can be dangerous but like most things can be i don't know anyways uh so what happened like everything yeah i feel like well, not everything. Most things. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so, yeah. All right, so let's get into characters. Uh, our main character is Catherine Morlin. So she was a real tomboy when she was a kid. She liked to run around the country do- countryside and do stuff that boys did back then instead of girls. Um, she just had more, more like, masculine, quote-unquote, interests the time uh she never liked to read and other crap like that that women did like poetry drawing all that stuff until she got a bit older and then sort of matured and started to pay attention to things like poetry and music she developed like a genuine interest in them and she was kind of sad that she hadn't before um and she also became very pretty <laughs> so uh she can't write or play very well but she is super interested in reading and listening to performances so she's a fan of them but she doesn't have any real talent herself which makes her sad (laughs) but um she can't appreciate them so basically she gains an appreciation for like more classy and ladylike ladylike art forms and pastimes um and apparently i don't know why they bring this up but she was not cute when she was a kid and it's like a point in the book where they where Austin, like, talks about her, she was like, and she was ugly. Even her parents who loved her were like, you ain't never gonna be a looker. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was like, this is so mean. But it was funny. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, she grows up. She starts to be, like, more, like, she's more, like, blossoming into, like, more of a, a, a young lady and whatnot. Um, and so, she spends some time in her hometown until... Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Allen, friends of the family, see that she's, like, a pretty young lady, but there aren't really any young men in her town. There's, like, very few families, so there's not a lot of socializing, not no, not many balls. She hasn't technically had her, like, coming out, you know? Mm-hmm. Whatever it is where you, like, turn, Debut- like, 60. Debutante. Yeah. Yeah, like, the ton or whatever. I don't know. Whatever. So they're like oh we should take her to bath so they decide to take her with them to a stay in bath um her family also doesn't have enough money to do that so friends of nico friends of the family who do have money mr and mrs allen they're like we'll take her um so she's out there but there's no one to hang out with basically her her mr and mrs allen don't know anybody um until they meet the thorps and the tilneys um so the thorpes are uh old family no old friends that mrs allen had from school so she went to school with mrs thorpe um and then the tilneys are just she meets henry tilney by accident like the 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 guy who's running a not running it but hosting a ball basically introduces them together and is like you guys should dance and talk and they're like okay and this is the first person i think she's ever talked to while she's been in bath for like 
a few weeks, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she's like, oh my god, thank you, finally somebody. <laughs> I can talk to somebody besides these random people. Yeah, and so they actually hit it off right away. Um, oh, that's nice. But the very next day, he's not there. Um, so she's like looking for him, and he's not there. So she's like, I made a friend. Yeah, he's and gone. then she meets Isabella Thorpe because her mom went to school with Mrs. Allen. Um, so they become friends right away. Catherine loves Isabella because, you know, no friends, and then suddenly one friend who's like really nice. Um, yeah, so. Also, Mr. Allen wouldn't really hang out with them. I don't know if this was, like, a, a normal husband-wife thing, but he would literally dip and leave them alone. <laughs> and, like, so there was nobody really to make intro... Oh, bless you. To make introductions for them, which back then you had to be introduced to somebody formally. Otherwise, it was considered re- incredibly rude just to, like, tap somebody on the shoulder and be like, Hey, my name is such and such. My friend knows you, I think. You had to be introduced by somebody that already knew them. How did you meet people? That's so weird. You had to know other people. <laughs> Basically, yeah, it was... It, it's a good thing we don't do that anymore because it would make things way more awkward. But anyways, it's because, like, in Pride and Prejudice, when um, Mr. Collins walks up to uh, Mr. Darcy at the ball <gasps> and he taps oh him God, on the shoulder... Yeah. That was considered incredibly rude and embarrassing. So when Lizzie is like... Mr. Collins. No, it was really weird. Mr. Collins doing anything is weird and embarrassing, but that specifically was like, you don't do that. That's taboo. I remember watching that scene and just being like, oh no, don't do that. I thought he was going to try and assert dominance over the situation. I was like, he's literally like a duke. (laughs) No. Yeah. You're like a pastor. Yeah, I think back then it was more, it had more to do with like class and social status, like don't talk to me if you don't know anybody that I know. But um, I think we kind of did away with it because that kind of class also went away. Like, I mean, it's still a thing, but we don't think about it as much. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, um, let me see. Where was I? Okay. Next character is Mr. Thorpe, Isabella's annoying brother. I already talked about him. He sucks. Yeah, he doesn't really listen to Catherine, talks constantly about how much money and carriages and horses he has to her, um, and then he thinks, like, every man should drink a bottle of liquor a day, and it would help them with many illnesses, and she's like, what? You're a drunkard. Uh. No. (laughs) Um. You're trying to compensate. And then he asks her, like, basically in a sneaky way, because she's naive, and she's lived pretty sheltered her entire life, um, if Mr. Allen is going to give all his money to her when he dies, uh, he asks first if Mr. Allen is rich, and I quote, as a Jew, Mm. uh, and she goes, what? (laughs) Like, I don't, what? (laughs) And then he has to explain, um, like, does he have a lot of money? And she's like, oh, yeah, I guess, weirdo. And then... Also, he proposes to her by asking... In his head, this is what a proposal is. He asks her, after um, their siblings get engaged, um, if she thinks marriage in general is a good idea for people to do. He's like, oh, they're getting married. Isn't that nice? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, so marriage is a good idea to you? And she's like, I mean, yeah, people fall in love. They get married or, you know, convenience stuff. That was a proposal? apparently and he doesn't explain that to her he writes a letter because he leaves after that right because he has some crap to do um and he writes a letter to isabella his sister and she's like oh you're engaged to him and she's like what who my brother and she's like no and the whole time isabella is like oh i'm pretty sure you're engaged like you must have said something like you guys were talking for so long and she was like he said like we, we talked for, like, five minutes, and then he left. Was it really that long? I, it was a really short conversation, and I, then he left. I feel like it usually takes a minute to be like, oh, hey, how are you doing? He didn't get down on one knee. He wasn't like, oh, would you marry me, please? Like, none of that. Did he's he? just like He's just, like, putting on his coat and his hat because he's about to leave. That's how long this conversation took, wow. by the way. Where, apparently, he proposed to her, and okay. she agreed... And he's like, oh, yeah, do you think marriage is a good idea? 
like they're doing and she's like yeah it makes people happy you know and he's like he delulu got it okay delusional <laughs> and that was a yes to him in his mind i don't know Sarah. delusional this man is just, it's oh he's God. entertaining i'll give him that he's funny an absolute moon but entertaining anyways so here's the like, next character giving me mr darcy vibes yes but like, like no growth character <laughs> or character growth a growth character growth character no because at least mr darcy was able to be like so you maybe there like is me? something <laughs> you know she was screaming really loudly maybe i did do something maybe wrong. i did something wrong actually she might have a point <laughs> but this dude no brain cells no nothing nothing just oh, delusional <laughs> Literally. Okay, so Mr. Tilney, this is the next character, and this is the guy that Catherine is actually into. Um, so he's smart, witty guy. He never pushes himself on Catherine. Um, he's the guy that she meets the first time in Bath, and then he's not there the next time. But that's because he was bringing back her, his sister, um, and she's been keeping an eye out for him for the whole time. Then he sees her with a girl, and she's like, oh, "It's his wife." But then she's like, "Oh wait, no." Wait, no, I think Isabella was like, is that his wife? And she was like, no. Is it his wife? I just assumed it was his sister. Oh, my God, what if it's his wife? And then immediately he goes, oh, have you met my sister? Thank God. Or I think she talks to Eleanor, who's his sister. And she's like, oh, you know my brother? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> um. So, yeah, so he's not amazing Um. out of all, like, the Austin... Rom- romantic interest. I think I would have liked Delulu. <sighs> I would think I would have liked him more. Okay, anyways. Um, but he's really nice. Uh, Catherine immediately likes him. They sort. He, he's very, like, <sighs> charming, oh. I guess. Eh. Um, yeah. Delusional for the win. They both love to read and... He, like, tells her a lot of, like, stories. He makes up stories, and she, like, loves them. He's like, She's like, oh, keep telling me the story. And he's like, okay, well, next, the Derek, which is kind of, like... I guess cute? It's cute. Yeah, it's cute, whatever. It's like, okay. Yeah, like, he's very intelligent, she's very naive, which isn't my favorite dynamic. Uh... But it's cute, whatever, you know? Um, Austin was really sick, okay? I'm not expecting her finest masterpiece, okay? The girl was struggling. She was she was in a sick bed for months. I I don't blame her. Um yeah, so then there's uh Miss Tilney, who's Mr. Tilney's sister and who reaches out to Catherine because she notices that she's into her brother. Um she's the one that sort of like sets her up, but also she's kind of lonely. Her mom she doesn't have a mom. Um her her brothers are away a lot cuz they're uh, Henry is a clergyman, and then her other brother, Captain Tilney, is in the military or the navy. He's away a lot, and then her dad is also away a lot on business, so she's kind of lonely. Um. Yeah, so uh, she feels slighted once Catherine is tricked by Mister Thorpe, uh, Isabella's brother, into thinking that Tilney's left to do something else because of the rain when they had promised to go walking with her. Um. Basically, he says, like, she's, like, waiting and waiting, and it's raining, right? It's the day that they're supposed to go out walking. That is so sad. Yeah, she's like, oh, it's, like, raining. We're probably not going to go. But I'll wait a little bit, you know, because it stops raining. It's muddy, but she's like, I'm going to wait, you know. It's kind of rude just to leave right after. And they come back, Isabella, um, Mr. Thorpe, her brother, and then also Catherine's own brother, so Mr. Moreland. Um, they come back, they're like, oh, we want to go riding out today. We're going to go see this castle. And she's like, oh my god, a castle! That sounds cool! But she's like, I can't go, like, I'm waiting for my friends. And then, they're like, no, just come. And she's like, no, I can't. And then Mr. Thorpe is like, oh, I saw them, like, in a carriage going somewhere else. Like, I don't think they're walking with you. And she's like, oh, okay, I guess, you know. And then on their way towards the castle, as they're leaving Bath, she sees... Mr. Tilney and Miss Tilney walking arm in arm towards their house. And she's like, she's yelling at him, like, can you stop? I need to explain to them. They think I just left them, you know? They're like literally on the way to. I would have jumped out the carriage. No, he won't stop. He doesn't stop. 
What a jerk. Lied to her and then wouldn't listen to her. What a jerk. When that's she was her like own brother? Lit- No, it's not her brother. That's Isabella's brother. The one that's the one Who that is thinks this dude? Yeah. Oh my God. The hell you think you are? I'm uh-uh. so mad at this fan. That's before and then after he also pulls a trick where he like goes and tells them like, Oh, she said no. She canceled the plans. Bro, when she literally been- said, That is not what I said, I said the exact opposite and she tries to go and he grabs her arm. Bro would have been knocked out. And everybody else calls her crazy. I would have been so annoyed. <sighs> like, put words in my mouth one more time. Put words in my mouth one more time. He's a piece of work. Is that the one dude who thought she proposed? Like, yes, it's the oh, same dude. Never mind. I don't this is like Mr. Him. Thorpe. Isabella's this is brother. Other dude. No, <laughs> it's never the mind. same dude. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. He's... All of these annoying actions. He's and the same person. <laughs> He's clearly delusional. I'm sorry. What? I don't know. I don't know. A boy know. thought he'd be in, that she'd be into him. He gets more annoying. Anyways, so... Yeah, so she kind of... Um, Miss Tilney kind of ignores her afterwards. Because um, they don't really meet a lot. They don't really see each other in public a lot. Or they, like... It, it's kind of awkward because they'll, like, leave. Or they'll just, like, nod at her and then walk away. Oh, that's sad. Or as she's passing. So she... Because they think that she, like was rude to them right Mm -hmm. um and she's she's understandably like that makes sense you know but i'm trying to explain to myself and to myself what trying to explain to myself trying to explain myself is that what i said you said trying to explain to myself trying to explain to them whatever anyways (laughs) um yeah so eventually she gets to explain and Catherine is like, oh, or no, Eleanor is like, oh, okay, that's fine. Do you want to go out and walk again? And they redo it, and that's when he grabs her arm. Yeah, anyways, so, uh, yeah. So annoying. I don't like that man. <laughs> I forgot what her brother's name is. I'm just going to go with Mr. Moreland. Um, so she does go, and then she hangs out more with the Tilneys and is more around them. Um, and is invited to stay at their home, Northanger Abbey. Northanger, whatever. Northanger Abbey. Um, so meanwhile, Isabella and Captain Tilney, who's the brother of Miss Tilney and Mr. Tilney, um, the one that's in the military, I think, uh, they flirt a bunch in public, and she tries to talk about, she tries to talk to Henry about it, um, but he basically says, like, they're adults, They can make their own decisions and also like a relationship that is tested and breaks when someone like cute walks by. It's not a real relationship, not a worthwhile one. Uh, It's better for your brother to like see this now before they're married because if she like cheats on him because some guy is giving her attention that's cute, like in front of him sort of, I don't like just let it run its course. My brother is, like, a flirt. He does this a lot. So, I doubt he's going to retain interest in her. But even if he doesn't, like, it's... If your if your friend, like, cheats on your brother, it's better that they sort of break off the engagement and let what hap- what's going to happen happen because they're not married yet. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Catherine is like, I mean, okay, whatever, you know? So, uh, yeah, so she's invited to their house. She goes and visits, um, and this is when sort of the whole novel stuff comes into play where she, or where her, like her, her imagination does run away because she starts to think that, um, General Tilney was like awful to his wife and a terrible person that treats Eleanor cruelly, which is, who's Miss Tilney, um, She realizes when she enters his late wife's chambers, which are clean and bright and nice, that she basically made it all up. (laughs) She's caught by Henry leaving right after this and confesses, like, what she thought about him. And then he feels kind of offended, right, because it's his dad. And she's like, oh my god, our relationship is over. He doesn't love me. He's never going to love me. We're never going to get married. Um, But then, like, uh, yeah, so I think they go to bed. Or they go to dinner. It's a it's a meal that they're having. And he... Um, wait. What should I say? Yeah, so she thinks that he's going to say, like, 
I never want to see you again. I never want to speak to you again. But that, like, literally a couple hours later, he, like, smiles at her at breakfast and, like, patches things up. Are you good? No, I'm just confused. What? About the story. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense. Again, she's really naive. And basically, like, she thinks in her head that Captain... T- no, General Tilney is, like, this evil gothic villain in a story. Wait, gothic villain? What do you mean? Um... Wait, gothic villain. I'm thinking, like, he's dressed up in, like, super dark eyeliner. What? <laughs> I don't no, know. No, gothic, gothic is, like, the genre in, like, the crap that Edgar Allan Poe wrote. Oh, okay. No, that makes more Frankenstein, sense. Frankenstein, Dracula. That makes more sense. Like, kind of old school horror. I was thinking, like... <laughs> Not goth, gothic. <laughs> I was thinking... You, you okay. Like Dracula or something. N- no. <laughs> well, Dr- isn't Dracula a gothic was, novel? I don't know. Gothic horror novel? No, I was thinking Am I he saying looked every- like him. Oh, no. Dracula, like the the old school one or like the hot one? The hot one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was like... Which one, specifically? I need to know. <laughs> okay. Not important, not important. Anyways. Um... Yeah, so it basically, it's, it, I think this is Austin talking about how, like, yes, there's some points where, like, as a, Nico, young women tend to, like, anybody young tends to start, like, to get dumb ideas in their head sometimes. Um, but most of the time, dad, <laughs> most of the t- <laughs> By all means, keep narrating. It's live. <laughs> I'm recording. He's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, come on. Just feeding his arrogance. The dog. And his spoiledness. Okay. Yeah. What was I talking about? Whatever. So, they, she's like embarrassed by it. And she's like, no, it's over. And he's like, hey, it's cool. Like, I know you're kind of (laughs) dumb. Which, to be fair, she is. She's very sweet. She's super nice. She's a good person. Very She's just not that smart. (laughs) She's not that smart. Listen, we love Catherine. Is she the smartest? Definitely not. No. At all. But that's okay. We still love her. Anyways. (laughs) Makes me just want to smack her upside the head. I mean, not as bad. Like, there's Catherine dumb, and then there's Mr. Thorpe dumb. (sighs) You know, two very different dumbs. But still dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, it's like a a caution. Like, don't get too carried away with stuff. You know, don't let it become an obsession. And then, like, like fantasy and, like, what's in your head leak out. Leak out. Leak out? Leak out into, like, reality. (laughs) Okay. Um... Yeah, so they spend a bunch of time together, and she visits his, like, his house, because he's a clergyman, so he has, like, his own, like, Clerge. whatever, on somebody's estate, right? Clergyman. Yeah, so, and then she sees, like, this really, he shows her, like, this beautiful room, and she, like, falls in love with it. She's like, oh my god, this is so pretty, there's so much sunlight, it's, like, amazing, I love this room, and he's like, okay, good, this is your room. Yeah, and he kind of says it, like, with, like, with, like, a double meaning, at least to me. I was like, oh, so when y'all are married, this can be her room. You know? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. (laughs) I think that, because, like, they visit and they have dinner, but it's kind of far away where they have to spend the night. So she, in her head, because she's so, like, naive, right? Not naive, but she's, like, she's not presumptuous, you know? So she's not thinking, like, oh, this is going to be my room. He's saying, like, this is going to be my room when we're married. She's like, oh, cool, I could sleep here when, when we, like, visit. Anyways, so. That would be me, though, because I feel like you'd have to tell me. You don't have, like, assuming that is, like, you wouldn't Crazy. assume that. That's yeah. why I'm assuming this person wants to marry me. Yeah, like, I could be married and I'd be like, do you like me, though? <laughs> do you actually? Do you? Are you sure? I know it's 2 a.m., but do you like me? I know we have five children. (laughs) I understand. Like. Liking me is (laughs) crazy. That's wild. I like the memes. Anyways, so. Yeah. Um. 
yeah, so I thought it was love confession to me, but that's just me. Reading Anyways. it, you're like, obviously. And I was like, I know what he's saying. I know exactly. But being in the situation, you'd be like, nah. No, like you wouldn't. You'd be like, no, he's like amazing. Like, ew, me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Anyways, so um, a letter arrives from Catherine's brother explaining that Isabella and he are over and that he can't explain anymore because it's like too painful, which I don't feel that bad for him because eh. he was a trash brother. I'd be like, I whatever. feel a little bit bad, but whatever. I don't. Yeah, because it upsets. Catherine is sad, right? Because she's like, oh my god, this, I thought she was my best friend and, and my brother, my poor brother. So, you know, she's they kind of... both garbage. Honestly. <laughs> both garbage. Honestly. I wonder why you couldn't keep the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so another letter arrives from Isabella, who, by the way, never wrote to her. This whole time that she's been away. It's been, like, months since she's been at Northanger Abbey. She was like, oh, I promise to write to you every day. I can't believe you're leaving. Never wrote to her once. But she writes again, right? And she's like, oh, my God, your brother's being so silly. He thinks I was cheating on him with, or whatever. Like, don't believe any of those lies. They're not real. And just, like, talk to him. Like, we'll be back together in no time. The way I would have looked at that letter and just been like, like, all of us will be back together. And I'm like, are you talking about you and her and your brother? Are you dumb? Ain't nobody wants you, ma- ma'am. Neither one of you. <laughs> Neither one of them. Neither <laughs> one of you. <laughs> Go away. Leave me alone. Yeah. Leave me alone. Yeah, so she's... Uh, so, um... Yeah, she's like, I can't believe I was ever friends with her. Or I ever thought she she was, like, a good friend. Um, yeah, so she's basically like, oh, tell your brother to take me back. And she's like, yeah, not gonna happen. Anyways. Tell him yourself. Yeah, so later, when Catherine talks about leaving, because she's like, it's been a while, I should probably leave. I'm, like, wearing out my welcome here. Um, and, you know, she wants to stay longer, but so she's like, I have to talk to him about it, because this is getting, I'm being, like, rude, right? And then Eleanor is like, what do you mean you want to leave? I want you to stay, like, for a long time, right? And... She's like, really? And she's like, yeah, stay longer. Like, I like you. I don't want you to leave. And she's like, okay, cool. I'll, I'll like, write to my parents and, be, and ask them. And so the next day, or no, as they're talking about this, somebody strolls up a carriage, right? So she runs down, and then she comes back up, uh, like, I think an hour later. Some time passes. And she's kind of sad, and she's like, you have to leave. My dad wants you to leave, like, right away. Oh, that's weird. Like, the next morning, which is not something you do. It's, this is considered very rude. Anyways, so, um, yeah, so she has to leave in the morning, so she packs up, and then she's like, oh, I, something happened. I did something. I don't know what it is, but it must be my fault, where I've, like, ruined our relationship. Pretty sure that's not what's happening. Yeah, she's like, I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to hit, marry Henry. I'm gonna be, like, heartbroken. I'm never going to love anybody else, you know? And then as she's leaving, she Eleanor is like, do you need money? And she's like, oh, no, 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 I don't want your money. And she's like, do you have money left? You've been here for a really long time. And she checks and she has nothing. Broke. And she's like, it's a good thing I, like, asked you because you would have, like, left and not had money to get home. And my dad doesn't want to send somebody with you, which, again, super rude. You did not do that back then, like a young woman traveling by herself incredibly dangerous i mean it's in danger it's, it's dangerous now, now. <laughs> imagine back then i don't like going around anywhere without you i'm like no nope, you're coming with me yeah <laughs> yeah so she's like oh my god you would have gone and my dad would like not have cared and i wouldn't have nobody would like known. you would have been stranded and she's like can i have some money then <laughs> and she's like yes take it and they're like both crying why is her dad acting like that though i mean the dad Okay, so I have right here, pause, what do you think happened that made him kick her out? I feel like there's a rumor going around. About yes! Her. Is it because I talked to her before? No, I'm just thinking. I'm like, okay, why would why would somebody do something so incredibly rude when it's already a prospect of a marriage? Obviously, someone is saying, one, she's a slut. <gasps> I'm just saying it. It's either that or like I mean, she did I mean, something- Hermes really really taboo like maybe she was i don't know 
stole something or something, which I doubt, but yes, yeah, it, it was between those two options. Like, something illegal, or she's going around with every man. Rumors? Yes, rumor-wise. Both of them? I'm leaning more on she was flirting around with multiple men. Kind of like what happened to Jane in Pride and Prejudice? Yes. Okay. Um, all right, so let me explain what happened. So, John Thorpe, Isabella's brother, basically what happened, uh, he explained that the Morelands aren't actually rich. Now, you might be wondering, why did Captain, or General Tilly think that the Morelands were rich? John Thorpe said that they were. Basically, he said that, um, uh, Catherine was Mr. and Mrs. Allen's sole heir, that he was going to leave, they were going to leave all their money to her, um, just to impress him, because General Tillany is, like, a, a huge figure, and, uh, very well respected, so he was trying to impress her, I mean, him, and then also, like, show off Catherine, because he's, like, in his head, he thinks he's engaged, mm -hmm. right? So, oof, I had to burp, okay. <clears throat> yeah, so, basically, uh, John Thorpe writes a letter, I think, trying to explain, or no, he, like, bumps into him in Bath, and he's, like, or London, somewhere, he bumps into him, and he explains, like, oh, the Morelands aren't actually rich, like, there's, like, a bunch of them, and they don't have a, a lot of money, there's, like, and she does have a ton of siblings, so he's basic. he basically thinks that she lied to them, but he never actually asked her anything about her financial situation. Never asked her, like, oh, do you have money? Do you... Like, only... And I think he only asked John Thorpe about her financial status or whatever. Um, it has her in her his home for, like, months and months. Is like, basically approving of the courtship of him and it, of his son and Catherine together. And, like putting them together a lot and and then suddenly is like because he does help out in the beginning when there's like a lot of confusion especially because of freaking john thorpe um but yeah literally comes back the day like he like he left a few hours ago or the day before he left and then he came back the next day um like right after hearing what john thorpe said about her money and says she has to go immediately upon arrival and Eleanor of course is like talking to him which is why like time passes before she goes back down or upstairs to talk to Catherine but um yeah so in my opinion he's kind of trash up until this point he doesn't seem like it especially because um the whole thing where Catherine kind of like makes up in her head that he was really mean to like um Eleanor and his late wife turns out to be like completely fake and then he actually really cared about her but you know he, he eventually sort of like he didn't get over the grief but he he was able to be happy again you know mm -hmm. um but yeah i don't know in this in my my head i'm like why would you why would you treat somebody so rude like all of a sudden and not even explain to her based off of stuff that somebody else told you one person told you about them Okay, yeah, that's weird. That hasn't really known them all that well. I don't know. Um, it's weird and kind of rude. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so uh, Catherine leaves. She goes to her house, and then she's kind of sad. She's moping around. Her her mom is like, you know, you're not really, you're not really like doing stuff that you used to like to do, and she's like. I fell in love with somebody, and then her mom and dad are like, oh, oh, that's why you've been so sad. <laughs> that makes sense. And then literally, I think a few hours later, um, Henry Tilney shows up and proposes to her, and they get married and live happily ever after, basically. Like, he, heur he heard about what happened, and he just immediately drove to her house. Um, yeah, so again, it's kind of anticlimactic. Yeah. It's like... Oh, I'm coming, darling. Yeah, I don't know. And then just went, hey, yo, um, I love ya. Let's get married. <laughs> There's, like, not a lot of conflict. It's more just... Miscommunication. 
I mean, not even that, because the only person that has, like, miscommunication is the dad, and he, honestly, I don't care about him. But he is, like, a big, the thing is, he's, like, a, a obstacle to their, like, relationship, but then it's resolved super easily. He just goes, like, I respect my dad, but I'm gonna marry you anyways. And she's like, oh, cool. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so, um, oh, okay, so, last thing up is adaptation. So, for Northanger Abbey, there are, there's only, like, three that I could find. One of them is loosely based on the novel, and it's more of a modern-type film called Ruby in Paradise. Um, so, instead of going to Bath for vacation in society like Catherine, the main character ruby her mom dies and she has to move to florida and basically like be self-sufficient and like grow up overnight because i think she's 17 or 18 so she's technically almost an adult or already adult but she's basically like she hasn't had to take care of herself really so she has to learn and uh she has a choice between two men um one of them is like this financially stable guy and then another one is somebody that she loves but doesn't really have money so, um, it's sort of, it's sort of similar, but instead of, like, like, for Catherine, she's pressured into a relationship, basically, like, for her brother and her best friend, supposedly, not really her best friend, uh, Isabella, into being with John, um, she's basically gaslit into thinking that she accepted a proposal when she knows in her head, I did, I was not proposed to, or... I was not aware that I was proposed to. Never. <laughs> Wasn't even proposed to at all. Yeah, like, I don't want to be with him. I especially don't want to be with him now, because he thinks... Like, he's crazy, you know? And controlling. And weird. <laughs> but anyways, um, for Ruby, it's more about, like, the, the struggles that women sort of have to do. I mean, they've always sort of have to do that sort of stuff. But it's, it's a little bit different, you know? Mm-hmm. Anyways, so... Um, the other two versions are way truer to the, to the book or the novel. Um, they're period pieces, period pieces. Why did I want to say Reese's pieces? Anyways, so they're period pieces. Uh, the first is a 1987 film made by BBC, of course. And the second is a 2000 film made by ITV, which is like another British type, uh, network. Um, but the 2000... 2007 version was something I've seen before. I didn't want to watch it until I'd read the book, so I'm probably going to read it after this. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't know. There's not a lot on the 87 version. I might watch it. I don't know, though, because I don't really like, like, I read the book and it's not that great, but who knows? Maybe the series is better. One of those rare coincidences or occurrences where the, the show or the movie is better. Um, okay, so I have a question, Hermes. Sorry. Um, it's never discussed if Captain Tilney and Isabel Isabella Thorpe actually cheated or emotionally cheated. Um, what do you think happened? Do you believe Isabella, what she said in her letter? And you think it matters if she actually cheated? Um, she probably cheated. Um, pretty, maybe not physically, maybe emotionally. Uh, I feel like she's probably would have flirted around even being engaged and the brother was just found out or maybe he was cheating too because they're both trash but they, either she was cheating or they both were cheating mm. and honestly they both suck kind of would have preferred if they had stayed together <laughs> okay <laughs> trash belongs with trash um Okay, and then my last question, um, I'm kind of unsatisfied with this novel. I'm not too sure why, though. What do you think is missing? Like, the end, when you were telling me the ending, I was like, oh, he just, just found out and he, like, went to her. It's like Jane Austen, you know how Jane Austen has that one mm -hmm. scene where it's just like, oh, they found out the truth and they go? It's like that section, except there's no after part, there's mm -hmm. no nothing afterwards. Like, you don't see anything else. Yeah, it's, it's very anticlimactic. It's very unfulfilling. It's like going, oh, they had a... They're together now. Yeah, and there's not a lot of... There's not a lot of 
character growth with the main characters well the two love interests like the henry tilney he basically he's the same the whole time i think and that he just falls in love that's it and we don't i don't know there's not a lot I guess there is a bit. It's like watching Cinderella and him just finding out that he's the girl, like, he's she's the girl that he met that night, and that's it. It's like, oh, they found each other, but there's no, like, did they get married? You know, they did get like, married, but that's how it ends. Yeah, it's kind of like, phew, at least in Cinderella, you have, like, two other movies. I guess, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean... I think the Cinder- the thing with Cinderella too is that like the end thing is not because a lot of times she's she's half of the time she's already leaving because mm-hmm. she's like oh I am worthy of love like I don't the whole her whole journey is um, I'm worthy of love basically I'm worthy of love respect and human decency yeah and I'm not gonna degrade myself just because other people are terrible I liked that she wasn't very like. Like, very a people pleaser. She was like, alright, I'm just gonna do my chores, but... She would get mad. You could tell she could, she would get mad. She would get upset, and she'd be, like, annoyed. Yeah, but it's I like... liked. Yeah. So it's a little bit different. It's just... Yeah, with the main character, is isn't too much. It's just she gets a little bit less naive. She doesn't really get... Smarter. She does. It's just she's not... I don't know. She's not that smart. Maybe I just don't relate to her as much. I don't feel like I'm super wise, though. <laughs> I definitely don't feel I'm like, y'all people can just walk, walk all, all over, over me. Yeah. I'm like, I don't think I'm that like naive. I'm, I'm naive. Maybe I am. But I'm not Who knows? that naive. I don't know. Uh, Yeah, I think it was just anticlimactic. I think there should have been, like, like, there. I wanted henry to like did she at least fight for her yes or be like i don't care what you say dad or like be like cut off and then like make his own way in life like five years later he found his fortune he found like a treasure chest in the middle of i don't know you know what would have been better if she just fought her brother like her brother's gone and that one dude who's a freaking creep. I wish there had been like a like a Fight, confrontation like, between like her something. and like Isabella and John. I wish she she would have been like thrown hands with her best like, friend. Like told them off. Yes. Like like they they come up to her into their house and be like, "Oh, hi, we're like here." And she should have been like, "How dare you? That's what Get out of my face." And like just told them off. Nah, that's what's missing cuz in Pride and Prejudice, yes. Elizabeth has that moment with Rosenberg when she's like I'll marry him if I want to. It's none of your business. That's none of your business. None of your business. It's none of your business if I do or don't. With Rosenberg, Mr. Collins, and then Mr. Wickham. I forgot. No, like he has... Mr. Wickham comes to dinner. Lady Catherine? No, no, no. No, Mr. Wickham. Oh, okay. When he comes in, there's like a whole dinner situation. Yeah, confrontation! Something. That's some of the juicy parts are. Yes! I wish they would have came... I wish they would have came and then... Like, just her and her brother tussled. been just, like... Ugh. And then her, he, like, just, like... I don't know. It would have been cool if there would have been confrontation. And she tussled. would have told them off. And then freaking Henry would have came and been like, I don't care. I'm, like, cut off from my dad. I'm gonna I'm gonna find my fortune and, and make a home for you. I love you. Yes! Yes! Ah. This... Oh, hey, yeah. Let's get married. And she's just like, okay boring <laughs> but and then they get married wow yeah i don't blame austin though she was sick yeah i don't blame her and then i think afterwards i'm not too sure if after this or before it or during it i think your dad does die oh that's that's sad yeah why so was she, why was she sick for so long she was i she just had like a she wasn't very constitutionally strong oh weak immune system yeah they didn't have um vaccines back in the day and stuff like that so when they would get sick they'd be like <laughs> it was bad it was dangerous damn yeah i probably would be dead already a lot of kids died a lot of babies died i would have died already honestly yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of sad to say but yeah anyways so that was northanger abbey um yeah let us know if you thought that It was kind of anticlimactic. Or what you would have wanted out of it. Or if you like it the way it is. I want to know 
because there's so little on this novel because it's one of her least liked spoken about because it's it, her other stuff is just amazing right and this is just sort of like even Mansfield Park I don't love it but I do have strong emotions about it this one is sort of it's just like eh. I'm gonna be honest it's nice it's sweet I don't particularly enjoy Emma very much Emma is yeah more because I don't really like Emma as a person yeah, she's... I don't really like her. Mm-hmm. Like, I get it, she has character development, but I'm like, I still don't really like her. Yeah. I mean, okay, why do you not like her, but you like Darcy? At the end. At least Darcy is, like, he he does it to be nice. He doesn't mean it to be rude. Sometimes he's rude, but, like, he... <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't mean it as like a bad thing whereas emma sometimes she likes to do things that'll hurt people mm-hmm. with like no thought she's like okay like it doesn't matter if they're gonna get hurt I'm there's sad. apathy there yeah there's like she because she's rich and she's spoiled and she was you know like spoiled by everybody around her she doesn't really connect to them yeah. as people and she thinks more of them as like people she can just string along like a chessboard i feel like that's what she thinks of it as. she she thinks she's better than other people yeah where i'm like miss you're not i'm sorry you're not better than other people <laughs> just because you're, you're rich and cute yeah i mean it's it's something that not a lot of us can relate to but i i guess for other people who can relate to it more they might like it more yeah but i feel like mr darcy didn't like he was like yeah i'm rich and yeah i'm I'm, like, I don't even think he really thought he was good looking. Yeah. But he was, like, he still had, like... It wasn't like so much emotions. about ego as it was pride with him. Yeah, it was more like... Like, he just put a barrier between them. Mm-hmm. It they, wasn't... I feel like Mr. Darcy and Emma do have their similarities, similarities, but... They're, like, different. There's just some differences that makes one more empathetic and likable as a character yeah i think a lot of it has to do with the fact that emma doesn't really do a lot to make things right no stuff just works out for her well, like mr. harriet falls in love with somebody else um yeah. it turns out that mr knightley loves her um freaking mr M- miss mrs bates and miss bates forgive her for being rude rude like terribly rude i was like oh my god Yeah, she doesn't love, uh, basically nothing bad really happens to her. And then Mr. Darcy, he actually tries to apologize, like, by spending money. He loves somebody and she's like, I hate you, heartbroken. Still trying to Like, he goes through it. There's, like, some pain and suffering, so it makes us feel more like... Oh, he tries. Poor guy, you know? apologize. Yeah, like, he, he, yeah. He genuinely tries. He does do stuff. He's more active in his, like, um, what do you call it? Apologies. Apologies. Um, what's the thing they say about uh, Zuko? His redemption arc. Yes. Yeah. Emma is just sort of like, oh, and everything worked out. And also she felt bad about it and she but... wanted to change it. But she didn't really do a lot. <laughs> she it just, just sort of worked out okay. She just said sorry and they were like, Okay. Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing she did. I mean, she was she did think that uh, Mr. Knightley was in love with Harriet for a while, but that it actually turns out not to be true, At all. and it doesn't really last for that long. Yeah, I, that's pretty much why I don't really like Emma. Like, she's not the worst person ever, and I don't hate her, but I'm... No, she's better at the end. I just don't necessarily like her. There's not a lot of proof for that growth. Yeah, it's like, You don't see, like, action from her. Like, I wouldn't want to be friends with her. Uh, yeah, definitely not at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm surprised people liked her, i am be honest. Like, before this. It is entertaining. Like, it's like Mean Girls. Or Clueless. I was like, how could you literally say that to somebody and everybody just be like... Yeah. Without, like... Like, it's just so, so weird. 
Yeah, well, yeah. Pretty privileged, I guess, in a way. She does have, like, actual legit power and influence in the community. She is from one of the... Wealthier families. Yeah, the wealthiest family. Like, even Mr. Knightley's family is below her. Hmm. And her dad is... He doesn't really do anything. He's like a old, sort of senile man. She runs their household. And he's sweet. He's just like... He lets her do whatever. Unless it, he's like, but you're not gonna get sick, right? So sweet. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it was anticlimactic. I don't know why we talked about Emma for so long. Anyways, uh, see you guys next time. We're gonna start spooky stuff soon. And I have a bigger essay. Hopefully I get it out soon. I might do like a part one, part two for it just to get some of it out. But yeah. Um... Sorry, this episode took so long. My voice was all messed up and it it hurt for a while, so I didn't really want to record. Um, But yeah, see you guys next time. Have a good day, night, evening. Whatever. I don't know if you're up at 2 a.m. Yeah. Bye. Okay, that was Northanger Abbey. I hope you guys liked it. Um... What to say about it? I'm listening back now, and I think I <laughs> I sort of get what Austin was trying to do, like, towards the end. Um, because the, the, the idea of novels and, like, how much it affected Catherine almost ruins her... Well, she almost feels like it ruins her relationship with Henry. Um, maybe the reason the ending is kind of just like meh. Other than having to do with the fact that she was sick, maybe it's just because she wanted something to be really simple and not like yeah maybe she wanted it to be just a simple thing where they just everything just works out by itself um and there's not a ton of i mean it's kind of like emma at the end she didn't really do anything everything just works out at the end i don't know um but yeah hope you guys enjoyed it see you next next week